All right, Bertram fans, here we go. This is going to be part six. Going to catch you up to speed pretty close to where we are currently. This is where we left off. The engine beds were just installed. These are the platforms inside the engine room and the rudder shelf. Obviously, they don't look like much right now, but they will become the platforms in the rudder shelf. I take preparation very seriously, and this is proper preparation and planning. Prevents piss poor performance. Back to them seven Ps again. These are properly prepared. And there's the primer. That would be a three quarter ounce skin on the panels, really just to give them some stiffness. Those platforms are just fitted into place. Fairing has begun in the engine room. That is the generator mock-up sitting on that platform. Really, we need to know where the footprint of those um, isolators are gonna attach. Here's the rudder shelf with the tie bar. Really, at this point, it's just a blank uh, fitted to the transom curve. It will get notched out, thickened, and there will be some sections that will be solid laminate. It'll come up here later in the video. There is fairing on the rear engine room bulkhead. And we're working with polyester materials um, for now. There's reasons for that. I don't know if I have enough time to explain all the reasons I prefer polyester over epoxy. That could be an entire video by itself. Regardless, here we are. And now we're getting back to the generator platforms. We're gonna start adding some glass to those. And here what I'm doing is comparing that wooden jig that I made to the generator itself to make sure that the feet land exactly where they're supposed to. I need that um, because we're not gonna be able to through bolt those isolators. Here I had to do a little bit of, well, some manipulating. That's what I'm gonna call that. When you glass heavily on one side of core, you're gonna get some distortion. And I'll show you how I deal with panels that wanna curl up like a Pringles. But first, this is a, a fiberglass, well, we call it a fiberglass inlay. That sounds cool. But what it is, is it's a solid laminate where the generator isolators are gonna mount. We can't through bolt there because that is the bottom of the hull right there. If we were to through bolt, we would basically bolt through the bottom of the boat. We're not gonna do that, not on this one. The other side, the isolators also land on top of the outboard stringer right there. So there's not enough room for through bolting. So the next best thing we can do is put enough fiberglass in there that it'll hold any type of fastener we decide to stick in it and hold it for the rest of its life. Now you've already seen that the, the Kusa was primed with vinyl ester resin. And then I used a bonding putty, very high strength bonding putty, and it is high strength. And then that's buttered into the kerfs or the scoring that I did with the saw to give that thing to go back to the shape I needed to get flat. And there you can see that block is bonded in there. I even primed the solid laminate with vinyl ester resin, smeared it all in there, flipped it over and then held it down with some screws. After it was cured and the screws were removed, it did hold its shape flat as uh, just a little trick. And now we're gonna install these things. That is a solid fiberglass ledge epoxied in place. Those two screws are gonna hold it until that epoxy sets. And we're gonna go ahead and butter this all the way up and set those platforms right in. I guess we were too sticky and had too much mess to stop and take pictures. But there they're held in place. And once that epoxy sets, we'll go back around and tab all the way around the perimeter, except for where they run right down the edge of that stainless steel. That's not gonna be an option for fiberglass. So we're gonna rely on that epoxy to hold that. Here, the perimeter is fiberglassed on both sides. And there it is sanded after the fiberglass and blend in nicely. There was a recess all the way around the edge there. That is the rudder shell fit to the transom. There I am marking the notch. This will leave plenty of room to mount that cylinder right there or just behind that green tape. And then there it is cut out. We have a lot better access to the bilge area. 
a lot better access than we had before. And I placed the tie bar in there just kind of to illustrate where the upper rudder bearing or the, some people like to call them a pillow block, the upper rudder bearing will be located. And here's another coat of gel coat in the engine compartment. Uh, across the rear bulkhead there, up the sides, up underneath the gunnels. Now the rudder shelf is getting the, the thickened edge. It's uh, actually the cutoff um, from when I cut the shape, I reused it. And uh, sometimes you get lucky. Even a blind squirrel gets a nut. There's a pillow block. Um, and there it is set in place. And now I've got that rudder shelf clamped where the face of it or the front side is pointed up. And I'm wrapping it with some 1708 and some chop strand mat to build up that edge. And you can see it's very well built up. The fiberglass layup top and bottom will both overlap, but I really wanted a nice thick edge. And here we are taking out the core for the solid laminate where the rudder post is gonna go through. This is now officially called a fiberglass inlay by Bernice Customs. The point here is that you're getting about one inch of solid fiberglass where those pillow blocks are gonna bolt through. What we're getting is an extreme amount of strength without an extreme amount of weight. The owner of the boat would be happy if I built that out of two inch thick solid fiberglass, but it would weigh 400 pounds and we're trying to save weight where we can. So here that shelf is trimmed up, sanded down and ready to install. Now we're jumping back to the engine beds and I'm pulling out those screws. That 5200 has had plenty of time to fully cure. I'm getting them out of the way so that we can prime with high build Alex seal. Now we're going to switch gears and what I'm measuring here is an inch and a half solid steel rod and we've got our struts back from the fabricator and they are gorgeous. Um, I cut that hole for the shaft to slide through. It's very undersized compared to what the shaft log tube will require. We're going to use that as a mock shaft. And we've got some PVC bushings that slip into that strut. And they fit in there very, very tight. And the inch and a half shaft also fits in there very tight. It's a perfect bushing. They're slipped in front and back. And we've got that steel rod in, in place of the shaft. And here we are zeroing out that level on the engine bed and then coming out here and checking it on the shaft. And what we found is we've got 8.5 degree down angle. Well, we have an eight degree down angle gear. And here you'll see we had to pull those bushings out. We had to shim that shaft all the way to the top of the barrel and we could still only get 8.15. What that means is that the struts were about half a degree more than what we needed. On the starboard side, it came out to be 0.6 degrees more than what we need. Fortunately, they weren't fully welded and they went back to the fabricator and we're waiting to see uh, what we get back. So the running gear is on hold and I've switched to exhaust and drain manifold tubing. This is a, a 90 degree. I'm gonna modify the front of that port muffler. And actually I'm gonna modify the front of the starboard muffler as well. Um, we have four inch off the mixing elbow. Ah, pause. We also had the bottom blasted. This is a dustless sandblasting system. I'm gonna do a little bit more on this. I've got some more video and footage. I'll tie that all together. I'm fascinated by this air filter because this feeds a, a a suit at 70 degrees pretty cool and these are the muffler brackets from the port side traced onto another piece of inch and a half kusa i'm going to cut those out that is just an idea for the port engine um, we'll come back to that this is the starboard muffler supported with inch and a half kusa and those will get fully glassed into the hull and we'll run a piece of rubber underneath those mufflers and then strap them down. Uh, those may move forward and back a half inch here or there. This is just showing the tow rail, fixed a whole bunch of cracks. 
in there. Got a high build on there. And these are some cleat blocks. We removed the original cleat blocks. I can't believe I don't have pictures of them. Somewhere I do. And this is some grinding in the cockpit after the original cleat blocks got removed. That's just uh, <laughs> fitting. Dusty Bertram. Here I'm doing the exhaust. Um, that's a 10 foot length. Trying to get an idea of how I'm going to route that by that muffler. There's just not a lot of room there. It's, it's amazing how a boat can shrink. I had to cut that opening and then now I'm poking my camera down inside there. Here is the brand new phaser. The old one that came out had 200 hours on it, but it also had an oil leak. Now back to the exhaust. So what I've got is that is the generator exhaust. It's two inch and it's running right next to that five inch for the engine exhaust. And what I've had to do is I've had to route that two inch all the way outboard inside of that deck ledge support. I'm still not done with it. So I don't know exactly how it's gonna turn out, but I'm pretty sure I'll figure it out because I have to do it on the starboard side as well. The starboard side is gonna be a drain manifold discharge running right next to that five inch exhaust and that brings us pretty close to current i hope you all enjoy watching these there's a lot more to come we still have a a journey ahead of us and if you like what i'm doing give me a thumbs up leave a comment below subscribe to the channel maybe share with a friend and i'll keep doing it thank you